All right, let's take a look at our next problem. The machine is, uh, was, had four players play and finished with game over. I'm gonna hit the start button. Okay, so the ball kicks out. It's on ball one, player one, but you can see that players three and four score reels did not reset. But the game works okay. I'm gonna add another, I'm gonna load it up with four players. Okay, I can get four players. Let's see if the first ball, yeah, we get score. Let's, uh, let's hurry up and get to ball player three to see what happens. Player three. Okay, so basically it just didn't reset score reels three and four. The machine seems to work except for that. What's our problem here? All right, there's some of that nasty painter's tape. It's covering this stud on the player unit. We'll go to the schematic, but then we're gonna come back. We're gonna take this apart a little bit to explain how all these studs work on the player unit. All right, so let's talk about the player unit. Now, there are several functions done on the player unit. The simplest one is uh, there is a row of rivets on the player unit that controls the ball and play lights. And it's a series of rivets, 0 through 19. I can't show them all on this piece of paper. But there's a single arrow here that connects to the, it's an unfilled dot on the schematic, and it's uh, position 0. So as the player unit moves, this little arrow is going to move down, and these represent the rivets of the play field. So for positions 0, 1, 2, and 3, it's going to light the ball and play light 1. So that's how you rotate through the four players. 0, 1, 2, 3 is player 1, 2, 3, 4. The game, it's going to go to ball 2 for the game, which is position 4. And it just repeats every, there are four rivets and there are five sets of them. There are 20 positions and it's 0 through 19. So that's one row of rivets and I'll show the rivets actually on the machine. Now, another set of separate rivets exists on the outer part of the player unit, and we talked about these in a, a previous episode not too long ago. In fact, um, might have been the last one, where there are position 8 through 11 and 16 through 19 are used to control the BX relay, which is the last, uh, the game over, uh, last ball functionality, last ball relay. And then it, there is the part on the schematic, section E9, uh, this is the functionality of the machine where if you reach a score uh, set on the machine, you can win a free game. And on the player unit, there are four positions, 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can see the double arrow thing here. That means that there are two rivets on the play field and it's going to go through this. The interesting thing about this part is there are more than four rivets. There are actually 20 rivets here because every time a ball is in play, um, there's the possibility that somebody could win a game by hitting that score. And so what you've got on the, on the player unit is every fourth rivet would be position zero, would be to um, the first player. So zero is the first player, four is the first player, eight is the first player, and then for the second player it's one, five, nine. So it's a repeating sequence. And again, the reason for that is on any given ball, you need to be able to win a game if you exceed a score. And um, this is how they do that. So I mentioned 0 through 19 for the 20 ball positions. There is a part of the schematic where there are two additional positions on that player unit. And my writing is not so good here. I apologize. 20 and 21. And those only come into play as the game is resetting. Position 20 will enable Z1. Position 21 will enable Z2. And what normally happens is, uh, actually I'll show that on the next sheet here. We've covered this schematic before. This is talking about the add player. And um, we are really want to focus on the reset capability. So if the machine resets and it hits that position, position 0, it's going to actuate Z1. That's going to open this switch right here, this contact. So this will open. What should happen then is 
the machine cannot continue to reset until all of the first player and second player score reels are at zero. So the machine is going to sit there and reset score reels until they're all zero. At that point, there will be a circuit around here um, and then through Z2 to add the player unit. The add player unit is going to increment one. It's going to go to position 21. And that was, if you'll recall, enable Z2. So when that happens, Z2 is going to actuate, so Z2 here is going to open. That means we cannot get a circuit until all of the player 3 and player 4 score reels reset. So the first and second players reset, we've got a path, we open Z2, the machine is going to sit here and wait until, until all of the third player and fourth player score reels reset, which then gives us a path to add the player unit again. Now one thing to keep in mind, okay that's great, after position 21 the machine still has to get back around to position 0. And I think we'll cover that in a later video. There's another switch on here which is going to keep incrementing this add player. I don't have it drawn in here. It's, um, it's roughly right here. The schematic goes out and there are a couple switches here that we'll talk about in a future episode. So the key point here is when the machine hits position 20, which is after 0 through 19, the balls, uh, it's going to open Z1, wait for these first and second player score reels to reset, which will then give it a circuit to add the player unit. And then Z2 will be enabled, which opens this, which means that since these are all zero, it's going to sit and wait until player three and player four are all reset. That adds a player unit again, and then there's uh, another switch over here, which since everything is set to zero, as it's closed, it's going to keep incrementing that add player unit until this switch opens, and we'll get into that later. So the reason for our problem was, since I blocked open position 21 with that painter's tape, Z2 could not actuate, which meant the normally closed switch did not open. The machine thought that player 3 and player 4 score reels were all reset because Z2 shorted around those. So the machine thought, hey, player 3 and player 4 reset, I'm good to go, when in actuality, Z2 avoided that entire part of the circuitry. The, machine, the score reels never had to try to reset. So the player unit, this arm, comes off with three screws. We're going to take those off. But you can see there are a pair of contacts right here connected with the wire. And then there's a single contact here connected to this uh, metal here. And then there are two contacts down here. And those are the three wipers on the, play field, on the player unit. And they actually control four different parts, which we saw in the schematic. But I'll take these screws out and let's take a look. All right, so here you can see the player unit with the arm off. And... Uh, this right here is position zero, and um, if we look at the arm, you can see how there are three switches, three feet. This bottom one is for the ball and play, and then the top one, and then the bottom one are those double wipers. So it goes position zero around to position 19, and then you can see uh, 20 and 21 are, are right after that. So it's zero through 19, 20 and 21. And Again, the inner ring controls the ball and play light. The next two are that double wiper connection, and they control the, the score, the functionality that if you hit a certain score, you win points. And those repeat every fifth one. So like the first pair are for player one, and then player two, player three, player four, and then it repeats. It's going to be player one again because it's ball two. So... Kind of a good way to think about this is zero through on the lights, zero, one, two, and three will all be the, wired together. They're all shorted together because those are ball and play one. Whereas the next set, the pairs repeat every fifth time because they want to enable, um, for instance, in this case, player one, every fifth time player one is playing and they player one may have a chance of getting that high score. And then we talked about the other two functions, which are, well, obviously position 20 and 21 are for Z1 and Z2. And then here are the sets of rivets that control um, the BX relay. And that depends on if it's a three-player or a five-player game. But you can see they're kind of in groups. There's a group right here and then uh, a group right here. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, a recap, the inner inner single set of rivets 
positions 0 through 19 represent that ball in play light. And then the next two sets of rivets represent when you re achieve the score on the machine, the point score, you win a game. So, and again, those are every fifth one would be player one, and then every fifth one would be player two, and they move around. They're wired together on the back of the player unit.